Hi guys, welcome to this session on Microsoft Visio. In this module, I want to have a look at the Business Process Model and Notation Diagram, BPMN. And as you can see, I've got a link there, so I'm just going to click on that and create. So when you activate a diagram, you've got some pool or lane tools so I'm going to drag a, a what looks like a lane uh, but in, in fact that is going to be a pool if I click on that because it's going to have more than one lane if I move my mouse into the bottom left hand corner I can create another lane and then this becomes a pool so there's more than one you've got the title option there if I just um, I'll just call it test you can just label these by just double clicking on them test one and then test two And then if you want a separate pool with one lane or more, you just drag that on at the bottom there and you can do exactly the same. Um, just call that customer, customer one. And so, so you set your, your the scene if you like. And then you've got some basic stencils. You've got a gateway, decision, a task, intermediate event, uh, an end event, and then some um, process, sequence, flows, message flows, uh, associations, etc, etc. And you can have a collapsed sub-process with a link to another sheet with another sub-process on it. So let's just start this off. So what I want to show you in this video is what happens when you check the diagram because this check diagram has got some rules to use. Now if you want to know what these rules are, you can um, find out these rules on the internet, but basically there are set rules for these types of diagrams that you should comply with. So everybody's got the same hymn sheet and you can search for that and it will tell you what they are. But if you create a diagram that doesn't marry up to those rules, this will tell you. And sometimes it can be a bit frustrating because you think you've done it right and you haven't because the diagram says there's an error, error message or gives you an error message and you have to correct it. But let's see if I can do something really simple. Let's get a start event and as with all of these you can just use this little toolbar that appears there to give you a series of steps so I'll just go for that one and then I'll just pick an end so that's a start and then a task I'll just call that task one and then an end so that's very simplistic so if I go to check diagram everything is okay which I would expect it to be so now if I try and mess this up so I'll go like this I'll put a decision there now you can't just have that sitting like in these type of diagram just sitting like that it just doesn't make sense so I'm assuming that's going to give me an error message and it does so it's basically telling you you, know, you can't well if you hover over this it basically tells you what the issue is so if I click on that so if I click off that for example and then click on this one it highlights so that's the end but I've got something after the end and if I click on that one it's telling me there that there's I need that's a decision so you need something coming out both ways so this this thing here this decision at the end has caused the problem and the design uh, check diagram feature has picked that up so I'll delete that off because I don't want that and then I'm going to do the same thing underneath. I'm going to start an event, use this little tool to create a task, and then another task, and then let's do another one. So three, three tasks. Let's come up one. Now let's see what this does. If I do a check diagram, start and end, I use... Yeah, so it must of an outgoing sequence flow so there's nothing coming off the end of this it doesn't stop with that so if I put an end on that close that one down so these um, I'm not making any sense with what I'm doing here but I'm just trying to show you how you can use these diagrams basically very quickly you can create a diagram up let's have a decision on this one so when you put a decision in remember it's got to have something coming out so let's go for a process and another process on that one and then we'll go end so that's how that would work you'd have a decision coming out 
Now you can, if you want, um, you can see you've got a shape here which is expanded subprocess or collapsed subprocess. So if I bring, if I click on that, and let's say I want a um, collapse, yeah, see what happened there? Because I've got that selected, if I hover over this, there's the normal things, but then you get you get that option coming up, and that's the one I want. So I'll click on the line, and then it puts the, the line in for me. Now you've also got communication lines and sequence flows and, and things like that. So I've got a message flow there. So this sort of diagram, this process could be um, having a communication link into this. So, you know, send an email or something like that. So if I click on um, that one and then just hover over this, it'll see that there's a box underneath it. And then I just click on the line. And then what you can do is change the line type. If I right click on this line, it's at the moment a sequence, but now I want it to be a message. And then you get a, dot, a dotted line. And if I just right click on that again, you can see you've got associating as well, which is association, that type of line. So same with these boxes. If you click into a box, if I right click on these box, you've got loop. Is this a standard loop? Does it um, do parallel or whatever? Or type. So this one, let's say this is a user. If I click on user, you get a little man in the corner. So it's a user going to do that. If I right click on this one, task type user again. And let's say that this is an automated process. So I could say task type is going to be script. So it's just a computer script and you get a different symbol. Now I've got shape data, the shape data window active. So you can see the, the, the standard boxes that's in there. So it's got the... Um, type there so on this one I haven't got it's a script but let's put a loop on it so if I put a loop on it um, sequential loop then it fills it in there for you as well and again you can edit these and add extra boxes if you want now this one I created was for a a sub process which I haven't got but on the toolbar for process you've got create new or link to one that's already been created so it's going to just create a, a hyperlink. So if I just click on create new, so it's gone to page two and it's created a hyperlink to page two. And if I hold my control key down, that changes to the hand and I go to page two and there's nothing on page two, but you could you could do another process there. So if I, if I start an event, it won't like start an event, but you'll get the idea. And then I'll just do a few processes, a few tasks, should I say, and then end like so. So I go back onto the page one, that is a hyperlink to page two. If I hold my control key down, I can click on that and then you've got your sub process there. You can also create a sub process um, manually. So if I click on a shape and hold my control key down, see I've highlighted those and then you've got this option. So I can create a sub process, it's created page three. So on page three, that's all drop, dropped onto there. And again, you've got a hyperlink control key to that page like so. And if you wanted to put a off page reference to get back, you can do so you're not jumping back between pages. You just insert, you just search for off page reference up there and then put it on there and get it to link to whichever page you came from, which in this case was page one. And the other thing you can do is if, I, if you wanted to, let's do it on page three. You can um, highlight shapes. So let's just highlight shapes. And you can add a container to that shape. So what I've done there is I've just right clicked and add to new container. And then you've got a heading. I'll call it testing, for example. And then that tail, that that term containers there, and they're they're in that container. You can move them out, so I didn't click on that, which is not great. I'll do undo. If I right click on this, you've got container, fit to contents, and if I right click again, you've got container and other options there. Lock container, and then um, things shouldn't move out. That one is not in the container, so it's just those three, which will stop you adding anything into the. The container and that's not a great example of this diagram now because I've been messing about with this and not really paying much attention to what I'm creating I can guarantee when I click on the process option and check diagram 
it's going to come up with something so script or manual tasks yeah because it's not liking that I must not have an incoming let's have a hover over this let's click on that one when start and end events are used a task or collapse sub process must have an outgoing sequence flow unless it is a compensation activity so there's nothing coming out of that so that's okay so we'd have to create that now if I just close that one off and let's go back to page two page two's got a little diagram that we did in page three so this is just a very quick look at this type of diagram so normally it's referred to as a BPMN diagram and you get it from the start menu and flow charts. So hopefully that was of use to you and it's for the first time you've had a look at that, go on the internet, search for it and you'll get loads and loads of information of how to use these diagrams. But this is how to create one in Visio. So hopefully that was of use to you and I thank you for your time and I'll see you on the next one.